fortunately business techno sort of uploaded an entire thread talking about the issue here i think there's a video of the original story but basically uploading a lot of the kind of tributes from people that paid in his respects right and again i just my question is as a guy or as a dude or just as a person when is it like again i think there's probably marco corolla guys probably um tweet is maybe the best of evidence of it in terms of kind of a neutral just you know one message kind of leave it at that but if you had a friend right that was convicted of or that was a lit like what is it what would require you to not to be a friend of somebody what would what would kind of be the thing and for me i was thinking about it today and i think the thing that would actually make me immediately delete someone's number and not be their friend anymore and just kind of leave it, you know, would be something to do with money, right? I don't know, you lend them money, they run off of it and they just don't answer your calls, something like that. That's just like, you know, you're dead to me. And then maybe something to do with kids, right? Involving something heinous or untoward with children. Like even just the allegation alone would probably make me, you know, never talk to you again. And I think that's about it, right? I think so. Having thought about it properly. I think that's about it. Even stuff like murder or, you know, kind of really, you know, a gr like GBH, grievous body harm and stuff. I'd have to kind of get the context of the story because it's easy. Like, oh, sorry. So stuff to do with kids, um, rape, of course, like you're completely done, d dead to me and anything to do with money. When it comes to murder and anything come to do with violence, I'd have to kind of find out what the story is, especially for my friend, because I know how quickly things can escalate, especially between two guys especially when the emotions are raw um you know i don't i don't know what the issue is i'd love to kind of actually have the context to it and then i can kind of weigh my way up both sides of the story and then make decisions that way but if I, one of my friends is accused of rape one of my friends is accused of touching up kids one of my friends is accused is kind of you know responsible for ripping off people being a basically uh being a scam artist being a fraud being a thief you're completely dead to me right i can't trust any of those people so i don't see why that's so difficult to understand so if you have somebody in a scene who for the most part is well known in that industry that scene the scene is small to be a little bit of a ladies man right to be a bit handy to be a great aggressive he's got allegations you know coming out the woodwork i'm assuming especially in the next few weeks you're probably going to see a lot of people kind of coming out with their own stories i think it depends really maybe they might think you know repercussions of the scene they don't want to speak out but it's well known that he might be a bit of a creeper to be kind of outwardly confident of just i don't know not confident but just you know so unaware of that and not reading the room properly and maybe how this might go down with victims of sexual assault is very bizarre very very odd and i don't really know why that is maybe it's just the fact that they just these people have always been like this and we're kind of seeing their true colors now because we're <clears throat> all under lockdown and essentially people are not playing behind a deck anymore so they're having to kind of show more of their personality and you're kind of seeing the stuff about them that you don't like that you've never seen because you know they've always posting pictures of them and god posed behind the decks and you know surrounded by beautiful women sipping champagne playing in all the best places and you don't really see how they would kind of carry themselves in these situations or where they stand morally or or kind of their worldview or whatever it may be and now you're seeing it i don't know if that's the case but again maybe the marco corolla example isn't the best one because i think that's probably the best way to kind of go about honoring somebody that's been accused of such a heinous crime but some of the other um you know jason's like this one by yusuf can't believe it only spoke to him last week he was troubled less than perfect but but always amazing to me that is such a ridiculous statement this guy's been accused of rape and more like more of more more likely than not did do it he has stories and allegations from in the scene you know from back in the day even right to somehow say it was troubled troubled is like having a coke addiction right uh taking too much care right being on too many drinking too much before a gig that's troubled um that's being less than perfect turning up late to a gig um being a hassle to the staff cool that's trouble that's annoying but trouble isn't raping people trouble isn't being untoward in sexual advances trouble isn't um constructing things so that everyone always ends up back at yours because that's what i've heard too he's always kind of whenever he's playing in miami somehow he always kind of works out that you know he invites back a certain group of people back to his home and you see that clip of him speaking with pete tong at um ims where essentially giggling about him being a ladies man and being too obsessed and you know with women and some people if he's friends you'd be like oh he's too sex addict no he wasn't just a creep simple as that mate um to me and helped us get circus going in the early days and we had many amazing times over 20 years and the thing is why i think in my opinion for the most part especially in scenes 
you know who our people are, you know what they say, you know what they do, you know what they're about. So for people to kind of pretend like they didn't know this side of Eric Murillo is really disingenuous. It says here, wow, completely shocked by the news of Eric Murillo's death. It's hard to believe it almost. So sad to lose a legend. You have left the world with many memories of happiness and love, brother. Like what? Enjoy being back home. We all dance with you. That is insane. Like happiness. Happiness. Really? Um, Dubfire says Eric is gone I'm deeply saddened and also very conflicted about what to say at this time normal response but no matter the choice of words some of you will have a strong opinion in a way which memorizes life now Derek I knew was a jubilant talented and a pioneer in dance music I'm honestly lost for words I will hold on to the memories I had of him the music he had his DJ sets the energy and how you champion inspired the room all this stuff is just nonsense who gives a shit about all this stuff that you know about him personally Dubfire again absolute weapon it makes no sense why do you why does this stuff matter just end it at the first paragraph or just the first sentence that's all you that, all that needs to be said right now you can honor someone's death in quite that's a you know what i realized with this stuff as well which is funny the insistence on posting about everything on social media especially with this business techno a lot right they're obsessed with posting about their gigs and where they're playing and where they're going has essentially got them more in trouble right because they're posting about playing in places where they probably shouldn't be during the, during a pandemic then they're getting group ripped about ripped to pieces about it on social getting annoyed but then they're not taking out the videos because they want people to know that they're playing right so they can get more gigs and this essentially led to this right where an actual friend of yours has passed away you're conflicted, which you should be because he's an he's alleged to be a rapist and probably is more likely than not a bang to right rapist considering everything that's gone on. And then because you, you can't t detach yourself from your phone, your social media feed, you want to prove to everybody that you are friends. So you're willing to go into your archive, upload the picture of you guys back in the day, laughing, smiling, joking. So everyone knows that you were actually his friend and uploading it for clout. This is essentially what it is. It's a clout RIP post. It's not even sincere. It's not like they're not even being sincere to his memory. It's just more so for them to kind of flex and to show us that, hey, I was his friend. I liked him. He liked me too. Look at us playing at Amnesia. Look at us playing at DC 10. And then in the process, you're, um, you're triggering victims of sexual assault. And you're also saying to the people that were assaulted by him in the past that, hey, your story doesn't matter. My story of him being a, a legend on the boat parties and after parties is more important than your story um, of assault and the darkness that you've kind of kind of been subjected to, um, you know, all these years. It's ridiculous. And it continues more so, more here. Martinez brothers, um, in utter disbelief at this news of our brothers all timely basking. And again, do you honestly think these guys had no idea about what Emery Hula was getting up to? I knew about his allegations. I knew he was a bit of a mess. I knew about this stuff and I'm a nobody. So what, what what more can you say about these people? Eric will never forget how much you've influenced us as a DJ and how much we looked at you when we were coming up. We'll never forget getting that call from Rob telling us you weren't as open. And again, this is all stuff that can be said months or weeks later when stuff is settled and, you know, it's not so raw. Is this the time to be doing this? Really? Is this the time to be eulogizing your friend who, again, this is what I'm saying. These people have no moral compass. Like when, when will a friend stop being a friend? And again, this is the thing as well as a big issue. So because he's got cloud, because he's well known in the industry, he can do whatever he wants. There's nothing he can do that's ever going to make you not be his friend. So he can rip somebody. He can kill somebody. He can touch touch up kids or whatever it may be and you'd still kind of excuse it it's insane it's insane um we'll never forget or when you came out to cleo for our first shows there and just stood next to us and watched us jam for hours while you whistled and cheered us on we could literally go on and on it's easy to focus on the mistakes or something mistakes so i guess if you're his friend what do you think do you honestly believe that he didn't do it and that the rape kit that came back positive with his dna was what what was that just like an ex just a, a a a i guess in in their defense they could say hey rape kits don't prove rape they just prove evidence of a sexual intercourse right um i guess in some respects some rape kits can prove can maybe substantiate the claims of rape if they can find bruising whatever it may be but most of the time it's just a way for them to kind of gather the evidence and say hey your dna was found in this person they're saying it's not consensual we're going to now investigate because we've got a case to open up right if they don't find any dna it's literally impossible for them to kind of proceed which is probably the whole reason um women are so apprehensive of doing rape kits in the first place right because they sometimes can be inconclusive in that regard but god almighty mistakes um anyway it's so you to focus somebody but we chose to big up you as the legend that you are and again what do you think if you're a woman reading this and you're a fan of the martinez brothers and they're saying that what um um he allegedly done was a mistake what do you think of that how does that make you feel 
weird way to go about things and we hope that you're in peace now and that you'll find your path we love you brother wish we would have to hold told you that more often jesus christ these guys are like insane again i'm, I'm a big fan of martinez brothers well it's hard even though eats everything did it as well so guided by eric one of my dj heroes and over the past years always chatting bollocks on whatsapp and sending stupid voice notes and that malarkey he was clearly a troubled so a troubled soul again addicted to coke addicted to cat drinking problem right maybe some domestic abuse stuff right right maybe maybe even that but even that you're a bit of a scumbag like anything that's self-destructive destructive cool troubled but anything that impacts anybody else scumbag that's not troubled always chatting books on skype he was clearly a troubled soul and i'm not one for second accusing um excusing the things that he has done but to me he was always an absolute gent and observed. of course to you because you're a guy you're a big guy too a pretty rotund you know close to morbidly obese guy and of course he would of course he'd be nice to you that makes no sense he's everything r.i.p mate like god almighty this guy's a wallad it's just insane jamie jones this picture was taken in march again so i told you about the clout it's less about again this is the thing it's not even about eric Mueller. it's more so about themselves get myself a pat on the back for being a friend of a dj that you guys all want to know but i knew him since last march when we always used to dj like come on Jamie Jones, oh God, how could these, these people that actually don't mind too. It's like, God almighty, these people, they make it so hard to like them. His picture was taken in March, just as the world was turning mad and travel was being cancelled. Yeah, but you guys are still playing, innit? Eric opened his home to us and let us stay there for many weeks. Um, classic move, but I guess you're a guy, so nothing's going to happen to you. He said, he always um, the best host. Of course, Eric was not perfect, and I can't judge anyone on the things I know very little about. Of course, you know very little. This is the... It's a weird justification for this sort of post, isn't it? Because I don't know nothing about that sort of stuff. I'm going to honor his life, right? But have you not heard of um, BTK? Do you not know of these infamous serial killers who they find out later on are these kind of like, you know, well-mannered family men that they had no idea that would do such a thing? That is possible, right? That is possible for you to like as a functioning psychopath to hide the dark parts of yourself from the people that you hold nearest and dear of and inflict the pain on others that know nothing about you it is possible to do that that is possible so to suggest that somehow because you didn't see it that means he's a good guy is really demonstrably false and it's a really it's a bad bad example bad example the things that i do know certainly for that is eric miller was a kind-hearted and humble man who was forever welcoming and generous um he inspired me over the years and nobody can deny that he was left a musical legacy that will last his way beyond his lifetime no he won't if you've been like I, it's safe to assume like if people are if people are saying right and again mark jason was never mark jason was never proved guilty right he was never found guilty in a court of law um some of the accounts from somebody's parents you know they can be picked apart and all these things right but people are willing to cancel michael jackson based off allegations right and you know these allegations haven't been substantiated in any kind of way shape or form or you know depending on what you believe so what 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 could be said for somebody that's been accused of a accused of rape denied it rape kit proved that you know a sexual intercourse intercourse happened between these said two same people so that did happen and then the person hands himself into the police is that not rape is that not being found guilty for the most part is that not enough for you to like delete their entire library and just say they don't count anymore insane insane and then i guess the last one what's this one oh we can see who's, who's that one jamie jones and then what's that pete tong eric or oh, pete tong's with a weapon anyway what, what do we know about that pete tong would always would always be our song um time marches on and never ending time keeps its own time here we stand at the beginning and then time passing goes by and i can dream for all us i hope you're in a better state eric thank you for being my friend thanks for the incredible passion of house music you took the art to another level you're a master you had your demons and you had brave enough you had your demons I'll always, I'll always be grateful. I leave. You leave an incredible legacy. You have millions of people smile and sing, and that's a blessing and a gift from all the people. Eric Miller, dance floor. So, how are these people gonna feel when all the allegations? No, it's not even. About, this is not even. A, it's a false equivalency, but like, where's the decency in this? Like, that's the quest of kind of horrible thing about it. Is where's the decency? 
Like, really, where's the decency? I guess they just don't believe the allegations and they honestly do think it was a consensual sexual encounter that the woman is purposely trying to disparage or kind of smear Eric Miller's name. But honestly, this isn't like Saint. This isn't like Ben UFO being accused of something like this, right? Who's maybe some people can be like, oh my God, he, that's not definitely how he is. He's a pretty decent guy. He's a gent, right? This is not this. This is somebody that is well-known in the industry, well-known in the scene to be a bit of a slime ball anyway. So I don't know why these guys are dancing and tripping over themselves to defend somebody like this anyway. It's not even, I get, again, I just guess it's a clout thing because he's been around the scene for so long. He's got a legacy. He's got an influence. Um, obviously, you know, his past work has probably way outstripped the stuff he does now because, you know, um, anybody that's seen some of his recent streams online, you'd know that, you know, he's probably not the DJ he once was back in the day. The scene kind of moved on somewhat from him. But regardless, I guess people just want to be adjacent to him just because of the name. And they're willing to kind of bury their moral compass and sort of kind of um, suspend belief just so that they can put out a post about them being friends back in the day. <coughs> Pretty disgusting. <clears throat> and then you've got another one here from Simon Dunmore. It's not easy posting about a passing of one of your contemporaries, especially when it's someone you know, closely worked with and were inspired by... He was charming, driven, and ambitious, which led to us working together on Raw. Um, I remember meeting him again in Landmark Hotel in London, where he showed me the logo design for a label he was about to launch. Subliminal became the template for Okay, this is stupid. He's just lauding him again. Well, you got DJ Sharma here. you got Sven Var, which is awful to see. Again, one of my heroes in DJing. I'm shocked by Eric's surpassing death. Surprising death. Eric was a great pioneer. He has been the scene. I can really say that he produced the music with DJ for passion, excited people to DJ. I've had a lot of good pies with him, and I can say that he was really friendly and very humorous guy. In the past few years, he had changed somewhat and somehow moved away from the light like this hippy dippy fucking mushroom lsd-ish nonsense is just insane moved away from the light yeah you can say that mate raping people when they're half asleep that isn't move. that isn't like <sighs> these guys are insane man insane i'm sure that now he will see the light again i would like to express my condolences to his family and relatives with you mind no mention of the victims either right victims family members um because let's put this thing to rest right he's ruined his own legacy he's the one that ruined his own legacy he's the one that kind of has put his friends in a position where they're having to defend his honor online because he put him he kind of took advantage of somebody like he's he did that to himself so to come out with these posts at this especially when everything is so raw it's just weird maybe it's people's way of, way of grieving but i would assume if you were actually his friend you'd grieve in private You'd reach out to the family. He's close friends. You do what you can do to make the process of um, burying him, whatever it may be, as painless as it can. But you wouldn't be posting about it on social media, especially with the allegations that are, that are kind of out there. Especially if you believe that, you know, more victims may come out later on. You don't want to look dumb. You don't want to look idiotic. You don't want to look tone deaf. This is what it is. It's just all tone deaf, especially from people that should know better. All these people that are in the scene, like it's impossible that they didn't know it's like the harvey weinstein thing right reading some of the accounts it's not the fact that harvey weinstein was a monster that's bad enough the bad thing is that the entire industry turned a blind eye right rose mcgowan's been screaming out allegations about rare people in the industry from years ago and she was labeled the crazy person told that she's difficult hard to work with ostracized from the scene that's the hard bit it's we know monsters exist harvey weinstein's they're always going to exist in the world unfortunately right we can't er eradicate these people right they do exist they're, they're amongst us but you would hope that your friends your family members not family, your friends your colleagues people in the scene would warn you about someone and say hey stay away from him stay away from her these are bad people right so that we could all be aware of it and maneuver around it but they don't even somebody look at some of the accounts with jeffrey epstein right like he hired he kind of tried to especially one of the women in the documentary on netflix heartbreaking one of the women he, he tried to sexually assault refused his advances but then he hired her to get other girls that he could assault and she willingly participated in that now you can get it to say it's grooming whatever it may be but that's the most heinous part of it not the fact that he's a monster because we know jeffrey epstein is a monster but it's the fact that the people that could prevent further abuse who've been subjected to their own kind of abuse didn't speak up for the people didn't stand up for them and this is the problem here we have here eric Mueller was a monster eric Mueller, more likely than not has other victims that isn't the case 
the issue is that the people that are nearest and closest to him, the ones that are his friends that are posting tributes about him, made no effort to pull him up on it, made no effort to um, get him to change his ways, made no effort to get him to be a better person. None whatsoever. Zero from what we see. Zero. Because they're all kind of trying to feign ignorance. He was a great guy to me. He helped me out with my tune. He whistled and cheered when I was playing in my DJ booth. <sighs> Dennis Ferreira here too. Posting another fun image of him. Jesus Christ. Only God can judge us. Until then, we ask for peace for Eric and a young woman in question. People need to stop counterculture stuff when everybody dies, it's sad. Of course, when anybody dies, it's sad. But this is somebody dying with an allegation of rape under their name. Not somebody dying with, you know, I don't know, some pyramid scheme embezzlement whatever right that hits someone's pocket but doesn't you know even then that's something you know reprehensible in that this is just insane the equivalencies that these guys are racking up of course carl cox who's a complete muppet right he is obviously there with his rip post nick F um, falcone of course all the business techno donuts that you'd expect are all on there posting their god pictures and images of him in the dj booth and then I guess the last one I want to kind of mention, which I thought kind of really spoke about it in a really great way, was a post here by Mr. C that I'm going to get that really kind of touched upon some of the things that I spoke about and really kind of put a lot of it in context that I kind of really wouldn't be able to do justice. So let me get it up on here. But, 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 and the, oh, it's disappointing to see this, right? Obviously, Jamie Jones and then seeing jack master who i've defended on this channel before from his allegations and somebody who i have a lot of respect for but if ever there's a person that shouldn't be getting involved and shouldn't be lending their voice or anything to do with these sort of events it should be someone like a jack master right people some people out there still think you know even though the people involved in the situation with jack master have forgiven him he's obviously so seeked forgiveness he's gone and done the work he went to therapy he's supposed to be sober at the moment he's done the necessary things to kind of get himself accepted back into society but the last thing you need is for you to your name to be any kind of way linked to the situation with Eric Miller and to post beautiful words Jay after Jamie Jones made that cringe of his statement about him you know being a good person in March and he had these demons and he had these issues and mistakes you can't be co-signing this Jack Master man you gotta read the room you gotta read the room and just step away this isn't the time for you to get involved man it really isn't brother it really isn't um so this is the post here that I wanted to end on from Mr. C can I get it up on here um oh Ida Ida Emberg thankfully somebody with some common sense spoke up about it as well um so i guess dj rebecca posted about something here too finally someone normal oh so obviously that she she posted the comment regarding jamie jo so jack master and then she posted this statement here saying to all women in industry and those around in that um in have had to deal with sexism rape and sexual assault um me too and the next one she said, I'm feeling very vulnerable and emotional posting this as I've been questioning what my outrage has been um, over the passing of Eric Mueller and how the fact that his alleged rape and court case has not been mentioned once in my fellow colleagues share their thoughts. Exactly. No mention of it whatsoever. The same mistakes had his demons moved away from the light like wankers has not been mentioned by any of my colleagues share their thoughts on his passing, painting a picture of a humble guy who was far from perfect, etc, etc. All this has done is brought up feelings of my past and shit that I have dealt with and the fact that even if i had tried to talk about it um what happened my perpetrators would still have been excused and somehow would actually be my fault this is not me to taking talking bad about the deceased but really the need to reach out to the women who may have been who may have had a similar experience to share that i know how this feels but i don't know how to change things within the industry as it now seems we still have a long way to go but maybe together we are stronger maybe or maybe not maybe it's just some a some a segment of the industry this big enough tech this business tech scene is just toxic and um beyond reproach there's no way of kind of rescuing it it is what it is and i think if you're a woman in this scene you just have to understand what the landscape is understand the climate understand the operators understand how they kind of function and move accordingly 
this is it no one's going to help you in this scene it seems like and if they're trying to make it if they're trying to make their way up the scene trying to get near to people they're going to excuse anything under the sun even rape they're going to excuse if you see the statements and again this isn't talking bad on the deceased this is more so the fact of somebody's been accused of something pretty heinous and from all intents and purposes it seems like they most probably right of all probability out there we're 99 percent sure this guy probably did what he's been accused of so to remember him or to post up eulogies and you know um statements about him being a decent person and making mistakes without any mention of the scores of victims that he might have in his wake in his passing is beyond disgusting but again i just think it is what it is it's a scene isn't it we, we, we can't change this this is just the way that business techno scene is and i guess this is maybe a good thing in terms of seeing it out in the open um dj high posted about it somebody that's outside of the business techno scene she says tributes pouring out freaking ruler by many in our industry calling him a legend before calling him a rapist goes to show how far we are away from reaching any kind of equality i hope none of you have daughters which is true it's not even an equality thing it's just a decency thing it's just a um it's just a looking after each other thing that's the thing that's really concerning here it's not a scene it's not a community it's just those people are the stars and everyone else is the, the customers who basically supplement and pay for their lifestyle you're paying for their private jets you're paying for their bougie rest boozy meals and noble whatever it may be you're paying for their gucci and burberry addiction whatever it may be that's what you're paying for you're paying for their drugs but they're not contributing anything to the actual overall ecosystem of the scene they're just up there collecting the checks extorting promoters taking the piss out of punters that's essentially what they're doing that's the issue that we have at the moment with that con that con with that community in the scene anyway with that segment of the scene she continues here said suicide is a horrible thing many of our lives um, have been impacted by it however when we glorify someone's life in this way and ignore the sexual violence you are sending a message to the female followers that they are worth less than someone's popularity and a message for male followers that there are no consequences if you are good enough for your job and that's the same thing i'm saying to you in the beginning i'm glad you said that it's not that these guys are even saying R.I.P. to Eric Muller because they're trying to be sincere and they want to remember him as a friend. They're just doing it because he's got clout and they want to um, remind people that they were friends of this guy back in the 70s or sorry, back in the early 2000s. Uh, so it continues. Um, sexual assault in our industry is rife. Ask any of your female peers who are or either DJs, producers or those who work behind the scenes about their experiences. Also, a few of them have come forward. Exactly. For anyone to... Like, if you've been in the scene... It's impossible for you to say that you haven't seen any untoward sexual advances or scenarios that could be deemed as assault. It's impossible to say that because unfortunately it's nightlife, right? It's not our scene, it's just nightlife in general. Nightlife is going to bring out the devil in people. Um, drugs, alcohol is going to lead to some very um, sketchy situations that can be very uncomfortable, especially for the women involved, right? But in most cases, you would imagine, especially in a niche industry like house, techno, underground, warehouse spaces, in dance music in general, that the smaller the scene is, the more responsible for each other that we would be, right? Looking after each other, making sure no one's a creep, making sure there's no dickheads, right? Making sure there's safe spaces. So for you to think that somehow in that scenario, underneath the banner of, of, of um, nightlife, with all, with all kind of the goodwill in the world, that there aren't going to be some bad characters doing some really shady stuff behind the scenes, especially the ones that have influence and power, the ones that have power, if they have influence, right, that have some kind of ability to make and break careers, to think that they won't take any advantage of that kind of thing is ridiculous. It happens all the time. You Again, as she said, just speak to anybody else in the scene speak to a dog girl speak to a bar back and you hear the stories you hear will be as like will blow your mind but again that's not even the point you don't need to speak to somebody to know that what eric miller did was bad and maybe eulogizing his um eulogizing about his memory on your social media feed isn't the best way to kind of honor him and also to respect the victims like that shouldn't be that hard to kind of fathom really in it um and then of course you've got the hip hypocrisy king and queens you got had one and Amelia Lenz getting involved in it, calling Eric Romero bad, you know, considering the fact that, you know, depending on what you but what you kind of read out there, they might be responsible for, you know, upwards to hundreds of deaths based on the events that they were promoting and playing at in Paris during the position techno events. But again, I digress. Ida Enberg made a pretty good statement here too. Um Ada Inberg happens that's Adam Bear's wife, isn't it? Which is interesting as well, considering he made some really stupid remark about it. But this is Ida Enberg. 
um, some guy called Frank Hoover said to Jamie Jones, you shouldn't apologize for his post. He did. And she replies and said, no, he replies, said, and this is really his stupid reply. Um, you shouldn't apologize, Jamie. You are simply paying respects uh, to friends. Uh, death. That's all. House music like rock is known for its sex, drugs, and alcohol. Again, this guy doesn't represent men. This guy's a fucking wallet. Like he should, you know, like we should be investigating him because this is an insane statement to make. Um, it's basically a lines and then both parties, men and women should both take responsibility for our actions. What are you talking about? Like, what an idiot. And luckily, Ida Emberg replied and said, sex, drugs, and alcohol still has nothing to do with rape. Never, ever, under any circumstances, is it justified to rape. It has nothing to do with Christianity or house music culture. I've been working in this industry for 20 years. Most artists and DJs have been super respectful and 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 in, in it for pure uh, passion of music. I met Eric for the first time in 2006. With all respect, I'd highly suggest you suggest you seriously think twice before you talk about things you really don't know anything about. They went back and forth. He says, I don't know why I'm asking. The man's a legend. And I have no idea for all we know. It's his first offense. Oh my God. No one else has come forward to speak. Speak now or forever hold your breath. We can only heal by speaking up. One idiot. She should have left. But what if she got drugged? She left to get sleep in another room after feeling intoxicated, right? He had no right to get in her bed, undress her and himself to have sex with her if she didn't want him to. No matter what, I don't understand how anyone could defend rape. It's sickening really. So it continues, it says, now you have my point of view. I can't help but wonder if you have called me a wannabe DJ too. If I had not left and if you had want me to come back then, we should never judge a woman based upon who they are. But truly listen to their stories. It's easier to abuse somebody in a lower position. Please remember that. God almighty, some of this stuff. And then just to finish here, I just, uh, Mr. C posted a really good statement talking about some of his experiences with um, sexual assault and kind of how triggering it was to read up stories about Eric Muller. He says, today was a trial day for Eric Muller, but of course he won't be there. My heart goes out to the victim who will not be able to receive any justice for being raped. As an elder in our community, I feel it's been my role more responsibility to make this post to seek protection for women in our scene. I was sexually abused by a man on almost a daily basis for three years for ten to age of ten to thirteen. Jesus Christ. These repeated sexual assaults were against my will. I was groomed and trapped in an ongoing situation. I was just a child. I was threatened by my abuser that if I didn't do as deemed he would tell my mom and friends I was gay. It was the late seventies when being gay was a huge taboo it was i was scared the living daylights out of me i had to remain silent as i was scared of others would make it is from this perspective of being a sexual assault survivor that i'm commenting about marilla's cases this as that is the only perspective i truly know did i know marilla yes for many years were we mates yes like the rest of the international dj mates did we have fun together of course did i post a photo of so of us together saying r.i.p and how much i respect him and feel for his loss not a fucking chance in hell for me this cause this case is about the victims of this man during the me too campaign i heard that marilla had raped in ibiza god almighty see what i mean um no women step forward um with uh charges it was no one it was no one i know so for me i had to treat it like rumors i already felt myself distancing from this man though as it's rarely smoke without fire which again i then heard rumors about rape in new york again no woman pressed charges and i didn't know who these women were so again i have to treat these allegations as just rumors um, one month ago, the story broke about Murillo during um, being charged with rape. After reading that story, I hoped he'd sent, he sent to jail to protect our community. His victim went to his home with a friend of hers, a witness, drunk, and the victim is still able to refuse the sexual advances and suggestions. However, being the victim was also a, a DJ. They just played together, and she's also a longtime girlfriend of another huge international DJ who makes with Murillo, which again, it makes the story even more sickening. She felt safe enough to crash at his place. She woke up naked and Marilla was also naked. Marilla denied anything happened, but this victim didn't feel right, so she had a rape kit test done the very day. Months later, the results came back positive for Marilla's DNA. After he denied anything happened, he then handed himself in. This is what I call bang to rights or caught with your hand in a cookie jar. Any ounce of doubt or respect I had for Marilla threw out the window, which it should be. If you're a friend, that should be bang to rights right you would imagine so but not to international dj scenes who want to get their clout off by posting pictures of their friends uh, three days ago he says i saw on the news that he was dead three days before his trial his victim will not see victor justice people are saying innocent to proven guilty but now that the verdict shall never come yet we all know as well as he did that he was going down for rape 
the last few days I've seen tons of DJs posting posters, photos on Facebook and face um Instagram, laughing with Murillo, wishing him the rest in peace, saying what a fun guy he was and generally making this rapist sound like a hero. I totally understand their moment of respect, their moment of sadness and lost friendship and sympathize. However, how does the victim feel seeing these photos? Um, how do other victims of rape feel when all the other male DJs in our scene are standing up or praising a rapist would they stand up to do the same for jeffrey epstein or jimmy savile good point um there really isn't much difference i've stepped away from social these days because it's triggered my own emotion as being a victim um my honest concern is this where are the victims of sexual assault feeling um seeing all these posts certainly not support our calls um every single one of these threads have arguments in them some are saying we should have mentioned a rape child respect for his family i don't agree don't post uh, don't post a post there'll be no arguments or discussion on them it's Murillo's fault that his family and friends feel embarrassed exactly not his victims anyone else who's speaking out for the safety of our sisters and our scene imagine the psychological effect that these posts are having on all sexual assault victims imagine these victims or your girlfriend sister or someone dear to you what is the most important is women being and feeling safe in our clubs and our festivals like i said and what kind of messages are being sent out for all these abused women is um of all these djs making their heartfelt posts about a rapist when these women need and deserve protection and support i see it it's mostly mostly male djs doing the back slapping i wonder why the female djs haven't joined in so much these posts have upset me if that's what making posts please make yourself objectively how these posts may be perceived by sexual assault and rape victims once the dust settles you want to delete your merlo loving fred as believe me it isn't a great look and you're all lovely people so maybe you'll want to do a right thing it's up to us as djs to stand in unity and protect the women in our scene and make them feel safe not vulnerable 100 percent agree with that man and again unfortunate circumstance for everybody involved but there's no way you can go around on a 